Hello! Welcome to today's review. I really like the title of this one. It's got stuff you shouldn't forget, version 1.0. So, uh, we've been learning all sorts of things throughout the year, and you need to remember these. Um, they're kind of foundational skills for things you're going to do next year, things you got to do in the future units, uh, and so, you know, stuff you shouldn't forget. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I go through these. Uh, you have learned about them before, at least should have. Uh, and I'm just going to kind of jog your memory on some of them uh, to help you get started and get them done. Uh, some of them I'll do the whole thing, but a lot of them I'll just kind of get started and uh, not do the whole thing for you. So let's look at a few of them. Uh, let's look at number three. What you're supposed to do is uh, multiply this and simplify it. Uh, and so things to... <laughs> sorry, to distribute this one to multiply this you have to take each of these terms and times it by each of these terms in here like so, oh I missed the third one like so so you got 5m squared times 8m squared times 4m times 5 so you get 40m well m squared times m squared is going to be m to the fourth 40m to the fourth and then you got plus 20m to the third and then you got minus 25m squared. So that's the first set. Um, here, I'm going to switch colors and do the next one. And you got 2m, t that's not a different color. Uh, you got to do 2m times those three, which is going to give you plus 16m to the third. And then plus 8m squared minus 10m. And then you have to take the third one and times it through. Let's do red. Yeah, do 3 times the 3 there. So it's going to be plus 24m squared plus 12m minus 15. Uh, and now you have all of these terms. There's nine of them. You're going to combine like terms. So things with m to the third combined together. Things with m squared add together. Not times ago. They add together. They combine. So combine like terms and you'll have a, a set here that has m to the fourth m to the third, um, m squared plus m, and then minus, it will be minus 15 on the end. Uh, yeah, so that's not the exact answer, but if you combine like terms, you're going to have m to the fourth, m to the third, m squared, m, and then constant term. So hopefully it gives you a head start on things like that. Uh, let's jump to the next section. You need to know how to solve quadratics. You're going to be solving quadratics in a lot of the future units that you have. Uh, so just get used to it, get used to having different methods, there's factoring, that's when you get it all on one side and you turn it into like x plus something and then x minus something equals zero and then you, you set them equals zero and solve from there. Uh, and then you got quadratic formula over here, you know that's your x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. You plug the numbers in. Uh, you do need to make sure it equals 0 before you plug the numbers in. Make sure it equals 0. Um, but there's that. Uh, and then there's this one. It's completing the square. Uh, I want to focus on completing the square because sometimes people forget it. We don't use it that much. So we're going to complete the square here. Uh, what you want to do is uh, let's uh, make it equal 0 by subtracting 7. Now we got 7x squared minus 14x minus 7 equals 0. So this way it kind of starts the same as your other ones, factoring and uh, quadratic formula. Uh, to complete the square, you do have to divide it so there is no number in front of x squared. So we're going to divide everything by 7. So now I got x squared minus 2x minus 1 equals 0. And now we need to turn the left side into a perfect square trinomial. Oh, wait a second. It no, it's not. It's like, almost. it almost is. It almost is. It's not. Uh, so, what we want to do is just get the x terms all by itself on one side. So, I'm going to add 1 over here. Now, I get x squared minus 2x equals 1. And I'm purposefully leaving a space here because I'm going to complete the square. And to complete the square on the left side here, you got to take this b term, cut it in half, and square it. And that's what you're going to put here. Negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 1. Squared is positive 1. And since we introduced something new over here, we're also going to introduce it over here as well. Uh, and that's going to give me equals 2. And I got x squared minus 2x plus 1. 
This is a perfect square trinomial, which means I can rewrite it as two binomials, well, a single binomial squared. So I can turn this into x minus one squared, and the right side is two. Uh, and the reason, the way I got that is I remember that this number that's gonna be in here is half of the b value, because uh, that's how we built it in the first place. We did half of b, uh, and that's what goes in there. So half of negative two is negative one. So there's my perfect, well, my squared binomial there. Now that I have that, I can square root. I got square root two. I got x minus one. Uh, I did forget to put my plus or minus here, because when you square root, you do have to do plus or minus. Uh, and then we're going to add one over. So now we got x is one plus or minus the square root of two. Uh, and that has both answers. Uh, if you're trying to get the decimal approximations, you'll do one plus root two and one minus root two. Uh, but if you put them in a single statement, you get that. So there you go, answers. Uh, don't forget how to complete the square or quadratic formula or factoring. All right, in the next section here, we got some graphing. Um, well, I want to kind of at least show you the start of a piecewise one. You need to remember how to do piecewise. Uh, and to kind of help you out with that, remember piecewise is you're graphing both of these, but you're not graphing all of both of them. You're only graphing the part of the graph that it tells you to. So uh, I'm going to go through here and uh, just put dots down for both of these. So this one here, uh, it's a line, the y-intercept's 1, slope is 2, so up to right 1, up to right 1, or it can go down to left 1, down to left 1, down to left 1. So those are the dots for that one. I'm not going to connect it yet. Uh, let's go to this other one. This is a quadratic, a parabola. The y, sorry, the vertex of this is at 0, 3, so I can go up to 0, 3. And hopefully you remember the pattern on graphing quadratics on either side is to go up one, and then to go up three, and the next one would be up five and up seven. Uh, so I'm gonna do that on both sides, kind of falls off the graph here. Well, we're not gonna graph both of these, at least all of both of these, we're just gonna graph part of these. Uh, and the way, and the part that it switches at is at when x is one. So x is one is here. So I'll do a little line here. And to the right of that is when we graph the line. So I'm gonna change my color here. To the right of this is when I'm gonna graph the line. So put the line there. And then on the left part, the x is less than one, we're gonna graph the quadratic. So left of my line here, I'm gonna connect these up like that. So. Uh, all these other dots here, we're, we're not using them. We're not, not using these because we're not graphing that part of that line and we're not using that dot because we're not graphing that part. So this is our graph. Um, we do need to double check our endpoints though. Um, this one here says or equal to. So I'm going to make sure that's a nice filled in dot. This one says just less than. And so I'm going to make sure my dot there is open. Ta-da! Now it's all done. There's piecewise, pretty much you graph all of them, but only the section that it tells you to. All right, so those are the hard ones, the ones I kind of tend to have to help people remember. Uh, let's just kind of look at a few of these other ones so you can remember them. Uh, they're more easy to remember sort of things. So, uh, simplifying radicals. Uh, if you have to add or subtract them, you do have to simplify these first. So do some factoring, 18 is nine times two. 9 is 3 times 3, so I can pull a 3 out, and this first term is going to turn into negative 2 times 3, and then inside what's left over is just that 2. So this turns into negative 6 root 2. So that's the first part simplified. I don't need to subtract. Well, 20 is 4 times 5, 4 is 2 times 2, so I can take this out and times it up front. So I'm going to give you a negative 4 root 5, because 5 got left over, and then subtract. Uh, this one doesn't simplify in there, so we got this. And so that's the first step. This is not done. You're going to you're gonna combine these together. But this one doesn't have anything to combine with, because it's root 2, and these ones are root 5. Uh, and so you can finish up that problem. 
on 14, I did want to remind you that when you're multiplying radicals, uh, the numbers, the things inside times by the things inside, if this one happened to have a number out front and this one happened to have a number out front, you times those together to get 6, and then you have the inside part, 150k to the 4th. Uh, but there's nothing out front, by the way. See, let's not put that and make it more confusing. Uh, once you have this, you can factor it just like we did above. Uh, this is k squared times k squared. You got 15 times 10. And then you can keep factoring and, and simplify things out. And you'll have something out front, something inside, and you got your, uh, your radical there. Um, and then one last thing I wanted to give you a quick reminder on. Uh, this is a trig question. We just talked about trig a whole lot. Uh, and you took a test on it. So hopefully you remember this fairly recent unit here. Um, but I want to help you set it up. Person is 55 feet from the base of a barn. I got a barn. That's that's very accurate barn uh, depiction here. Even has a window with like an X on it because barns. Anyway, person 55 feet away. 55. Uh, and the angle of elevation from level ground to the top of the barn is 72. This is definitely not to scale. So this is going to be uh, 72 degrees. Remember, angle of elevation is from horizontal going up. Uh, angle of depression, which is like down here, is horizontal going down. I didn't say it there. So uh, remember those two things. that help you a lot with your pictures. So we got 72 degrees, 55 feet. And you figure out how tall it is, which, uh, when you do that, it makes a lovely right triangle. Um, and to, set, to solve this, you need to set up a trig equation that includes two numbers you know and then the one you're looking for. Well, we have an angle and we have a side that's adjacent to the angle, and we want the side that's opposite. And so that's going to be tangent of those 72 degrees is going to be the opposite side over the adjacent side. And this is your setup equation. You can solve for x pretty quickly by times by 55 and uh, finishing out your, your problem. But there you go. Hopefully that gives you a, a good overview of what's going on. Hopefully you're remembering these things. And uh, you hopefully, again, will not forget them. Good luck.